People who watch security cameras for a living, what creepy things have you tried to forget? <laughs> Worked as a harbor master a while ago. Had to check the marina's cameras after a boat was abandoned at our docks. I was looking for the owner. I looked on the tape from the boat's first night in the marina. The man who had sailed the boat in was standing on the end of his boat for two hours, barely moving. Then at 1.30 a.m., he just walked off the back and dropped into the water. He never came back up, never found his body. Freaky. Story two. I used to do it support for a charity that supplied housing and support for homeless people. A large proportion also had mental health issues, so there were a fair amount of interesting events that happened. Being in it, I avoided experiencing most of it firsthand, though I was threatened with being stabbed on about my third day. Anyway, I come in one Monday, and there's an email labeled urgent, saying there was an incident at the stairwell of one of the properties on Sunday night. And could I pull the relevant CCTV footage and put it on a DVD? I had to do this fairly frequently. I skip through the footage, find the incident, usually a fight or substances dealing, and burn it to DVD for the police. The email never mentioned what the incident was, so I skip through the footage and watch as a clearly very agitated man ties a rope around a stair rail at the top of the stairs, then his neck, looks over the rail, and then just casually tips forward over it. The rope flipped him round, and he dangled there twitching for far too long before he just stopped. So yeah, that was a fun Monday. Story three? Wasn't a security officer, but I worked at a 24 7 gas station for a while. One night, my coworker accidentally died while at work, and I made the mistake of watching the footage. He went to the back of the store with a bag of substances, snorted it, and started acting funny for about 10 minutes. He then sits in the back office and gets fidgety slash thrashing around until finally he just goes limp in the chair. He had died of a heart attack and sat there for five hours before anybody came in, thought the absence of an employee was strange, and called the cops. It was really weird seeing people come in and act all pissy for the lack of service. They'd just leave thinking someone was lazy. But nah, dude was dead. Story 4. Was watching CCTV footage of a parking deck. And on the ninth level, there's this guy sitting in the middle of the deck, banging his head on one of the pillars. All of a sudden, the guy just stops and runs to the edge. Without stopping or jumping, he flings himself over the edge. I immediately called dispatch and told them what had happened. A few days later, I was offered counseling for those events. Story 5. Was a security coordinator for a large electric company and had access to like 80 plus facilities CCTV infrastructures. Was doing maintenance check on some random train station at like 3 a.m., panned a camera as far to the right as possible to check that it was functioning, and this dude was on all fours eating a deer in the middle of the tracks. Watched him for like 10 minutes and went to get the other guy on shift. When I came back, the dude was gone. Rewound it, and the dude stopped munching on the carcass, wiped the gore off his face, and walked into the woods like he didn't have a care in the world. Story six, I work in a retail store, and for a while I worked security here. Watching the security cameras wasn't technically my job, but we were consistently shorthanded in that department, and the manager was grooming me for promotion, so I got to fill in and watch the cameras occasionally. One day when we were reviewing footage from overnights, we saw this teenager calmly set down his shopping basket, take off his hat and glasses, and just charge at a wall, hit it head on. He did this two more times. When he was done, his face was a bruised, and he put his hat and glasses back on and just left. Weirded me right the hell out. Story 7. I used to work loss prevention for a big box store. We had a lady get arrested for public indecency, and I was asked to investigate. I had to follow her backwards from the point of arrest, and it was a trip to say the least. She arrived at the store swerving and nearly hitting several cars. She entered the store with two young children, both of whom are mentally handicapped. That lady literally dragged those kids around the store, slapping them and tugging at their ears' collars if they didn't obey. At some point, she just abandons them in the clothing section, walks through the back doors to the break area, and I'm assuming she thought it was the bathroom because she proceeds to pull down her pants and craps all over the fire exit door. She pulls her pants up, without wiping mind you, and goes back to the floor like nothing happened. Someone saw what she did and followed her. Luckily, there's an officer in the store at the time and quickly approaches her when the associate tells him what she did. Needless to say, she was definitely high and or drunk and was arrested. The scary part is, she did not mention those kids not one time. It wasn't until I reviewed the tape that I saw they were just still waiting by the shopping cart, completely oblivious and afraid to move. Child services was later called, and I still think about those kids often. Breaks my heart to think about the bullcrap those kids must still be going through. Story 8. I used to do asset protection for a Walmart in a very addicted area. The creepiest thing was seeing how fast someone would go from completely normal to absolutely out of it in the span of a year because of the substances. You could build a timeline of their demise through CCTV pictures and video. One man in particular really stood out to me. The first time I apprehended him, he was very polite and intelligent, just stealing to get his fix. 
A year later, and the fourth time I caught him, he was basically a shell of a man. He tried running from me, and I looked him right in the eyes and said, I know you, Gary, last name. Please don't run. The look on his face of someone knowing him who he couldn't even remember will always stay with me. Story 9. I used to do it support for a company that had a lot of heavy machinery moving around inside a big warehouse-type area. This giant front-end loader would scoop up material and dump it into a hopper. Along the sides of the floor were these huge concrete barriers. I've heard them called Jersey barriers and mafia blocks, but they are about 10 feet tall. And this one guy's life was ended when the front-end loader inadvertently scooped the base of the barrier and landed on one of two guys walking shoulder to shoulder through the plant. I was tasked to review the footage, then make copies, six of them to be exact, and then ensure that the footage worked and was self-executable and able to be run from a USB stick. So I had to watch the footage of this guy get killed over a dozen times. I too was offered counseling for just watching the video. Story 10. I was working at pub in Sydney and watching the CCTV when I saw a guy continually cross and uncross his legs while playing a poker slot machine. After a few minutes, he walked to a corner of the room, took a crap, and proceeded to go back to playing his machine. Talk about being addicted. This kind of thing is not rare. Mostly, it's people pissing themselves. These machines are evil and designed to get people addicted, and that results in some people not being able to pull themselves away, even to use a bathroom. Finally, thank God I'm a manager, but telling someone it was their job sucked. Story 11. Not a job, but my so. And I have the outlet monitor for our infant looking at his crib and room. It's set up like CCTV and it's creepy to begin with. I wake up at 2 a.m. and I go check on him and I go back to bed. Once in bed, I get on my phone to view the monitor just for reassurance and I see two light dots like eyes in night vision in the window of his room. I first crap my pants and I go in the room to check everything out. I can't see anything outside, so I turn on the monitor again and don't see the dots anymore so I think it could be a dog or something. I go back to bed and wake up again an hour later to check the monitor and the dots are ducking there again so I grab a pistol and go outside around his room and check the spot by the window. Really ready to have to pull the trigger, adrenaline is on full blast. I don't find or see anything but the monkey grass has been mashed down by that window like something sat there for a while. I set up a sleeping bag in my son's room after that for a couple nights and I checked the monitor so I could see what the night vision caught, but I never saw those lights again. I'm super thankful it was just that, but I was scared. I'm usually skeptical about stuff like this. I considered lights and stuff, and I hope it was an animal, not a person. Damn messed up person. But my son is now six months this happened when he was four months old, and the camera has been there since we brought him home. The whole time it's been up. I've never seen that, and I don't live by traffic lights and no street lamp is on that side of the house. I seriously almost lost bladder control when I saw them again. Same spot just an hour later, but when I went in his room and looked at my phone, I just saw me and him in black window. It freaked me out so much I prepared to defend my family, but he's six months now and I've never seen it again, so hopefully an animal. Story 12. I used to work at a university, and last Easter we had a break-in. We found the footage of the guy going in at 2 p.m., leaving at around 3, and not really taking anything. Fast forward to 7 p.m., and the guy comes back in and is walking around the auditorium till 6 a.m. the next morning. In that time, he proceeded to strip into his underwear, steal and wear a mask the Japanese exchange students made for the teacher, and smoke a crap ton. He managed to steal six full bags of random items. We've dubbed him as the Jackoff Bandit. Story 13. Not for a living, but we had security cameras installed on the property whilst we were living in South Africa. We had a monitor set up next to the bed so we could see what was happening on the four cameras without having to get up out of bed. One night we heard something, so we turn on the monitor and see nothing unusual. I'm ready to go back to sleep, but my partner thinks something is off about one of the cameras. Does this camera look like it's pointing in a different direction slightly, she asks. No, same as always, and it's back to bed for me. She isn't convinced, so she starts watching the recordings. True enough. Footage of some dude prowling around on the property and the camera catches him adjusting it. The terrifying bit, the way his face looked beneath the balaclava. Murder mask is what Miso called it. Pretty creepy crap. Story 14. When I worked as a security officer, it was my first week on the job. I watched my boss and another officer try to talk a guy off of the top of our parking structure. Didn't work. Watched him jump off and land next to an employee who was coming in for her shift. Guy hit the ground so hard it exploded the belt right off of his pants. I will never forget watching that. Story 15. I reviewed the security cameras around my office building. The cameras only monitor the outside of the building. We have signs posted everywhere stating cameras are watching. You get accustomed to certain movement patterns and activation of cameras. So I don't have to review the whole day's activity, just the parts that show things out of the ordinary. For a while, homeless people were using an air behind landscaping to kick back and smoke substances. It's all in full view of one of the cameras. Watched a few substances sales there too. However, the most disturbing by far was the sex. Basically, 
Guys would take the homeless women to that area and do any number of weird and wonderful things. The weirdest of all was when some dude lay on the ground and a homeless woman sat on a bench looking at her phone. He slipped off her flip-flop and started sucking off her toes. He took short to smoke substances, then went back to work on the toes. This went on for about 45 minutes. Then they left. We systematically found almost all the homeless adult stars during the day and told them our place has cameras and not to come back. Things have been quiet for a few years now. Story 16. My time to shine. My first job out of college was working for a big-ass security company. Think worldwide big. I was doing electrical engineering and security system design for them. One of the first assignments I had was assisting in writing a report about a security system for a nuclear storage facility we had designed that had been infiltrated by nuns. No joke. Basically, the facility got invaded by octogenarian nuns who started covering the nuclear storage facility in unknown substance they had conveniently provided in water bottles. The footage was jarring in quite a few ways. Story 17. So many of these will give me nightmares, so I'll throw one in the mix that I never want to forget. A year back, I was working at a hostel and we have security cameras throughout the building. Watching the footage from the camera in the kitchen, it is about 2 a.m. and a very drunk guest walks in, grabs some snacks, and accidentally drops an empty bottle on the ground. He then proceeds to kick it up into the air, then kick it again in air, where it flies across the entire length of the room perfectly into the recycling bin. In his drunken state, he threw up his hands, ran around in a circle clearly in shock at how amazing he is. Then after looking around, he noticed there was no knee there to see it. After that, he looked visibly depressed and stumbled back out of the kitchen. Story 18. Working in a rehearsal studio for bands, we had camera at the front desk that pointed down the hall with the entrances to all the rooms. One day I'm sitting there minding my own business and noticed there was a girl sitting in the hallway outside one of the studios. She had come in with the band that was practicing and I just assumed she didn't feel like sitting in the loud space with the band. So I got up and went to tell her she was welcome to sit in the lobby where there was a couch and TV. I got around the corner and she wasn't there. I went back to the desk and there she was, sitting in the hall, waiting outside the room. So I went back out to find her not there again. I assumed she had gone into the room, so I went and knocked and they informed me that the girl had left a while before, just after they had gotten started practicing. So I went back and there she was, still on the camera. It was only then that I realized I had accidentally bumped the freeze frame button for the monitor. Story 19. I had a job reviewing hidden tape footage, looking for people sabotaging, sabotaging food product in a factory. The entire idea was creepy on one level. They made pasta. They were finding things like glass, screws, staples, and crap in the product. Thankfully, none of it made it out of the plant. They had metal detectors at the end of the line because it's common for things like metal shavings to get in the product given the machines. So they want to catch that and stop the product. But machines went off and they'd inspect the product to find ridiculous crap that there is no way could have made it in unless someone put it there. That's creepy because think about how possible terrible it would have been had that product ever made it to the public. You aren't paying attention. You throw your shells in the pot, boil them along with a nail, then feed that crap to your kids who just chomp down. Thank God for the fail safes. Anyways, they need to catch Westcourt for his doing it. They install the cameras in the areas where most of the affected product is made and packaged. They record it all. Then they hire me to go through the tapes on high speed, looking for alarms going off on the machines or anything weird. So I see a ton of stuff that's notable. Some of it funny, some of it cruel, some of it just plain terrible. Eventually I do figure out who the saboteur was. But the creepiest thing was this guy driving a forklift around with his kid, not only on the forklift with him, but hanging out of the sides of it, waving at people. It's creepy because at some point, not long after that, the boy's child died in an accident with a forklift. Thanks the accident wasn't on tape, or at least my tapes. Story 20. Not creepy, but funny. We have security camera footage of one of my co-workers slipping and falling on his ass while operating a floor cleaning machine. The only thing that bothered me about it is the manager on duty decided to text the video to everyone in the company. I thought that was a bit crafty and probably unethical in some way. Story 21. I'm not in security, but I work for a bank and part of my job is checking the cameras in the morning for pings overnight and then making sure all the pings were just squirrels or leaves, etc. Last week, I saw a ping on our back entrance camera, and when I went to watch the video, it was a guy I didn't recognize walking back and forth in front of the door at 3 a.m. for a solid 20 minutes. Like just pacing the whole time, and every couple minutes, he'd stop and walk up to the door and stare into the camera. Then he'd go back to pacing. A car eventually went by, and that must have set something in him off because he legit ran away and didn't come back. We ended up calling the cops about it, but I still have no idea who he was or what his deal was. Story 22. We have an old fountain at my apartment building that has a large eagle statue. One night I had to check the security cameras because of a break-in 
and at 2 a.m. I came across footage of about five guys taking turns do dirty things. One of them even stole the Santa hat I had on it. Story 23. Watched a female employee, in the span of maybe a minute, pick her nose, itch her front pen like a champ, then reverse things up and go whole hand down her crack. Scratching. Large lady. Then she pulled up the hand to her face and sniffed. Then inexplicably, she licked the pointer finger. I've seen all manner of weird crap, and that one sticks with me. Seen people piss. Crap. Whatever in the open or in fitting rooms. Or people getting it on in the fitting rooms. Watched several dudes punching the purple clown. Always weird to confront them. Had to apprehend one finished on a rack of fubu. Worst of the pervs are usually following ladies around, snapping photos, thinking no one sees them. Coworker of mine had to have a guy arrested who was pleasure himself in the food department. People will do crazy crap when they don't think they're being watched. Story 24. Not necessarily creepy, but I work on security for a popular UK supermarket and came into work one day to find a note asking me to burn an incident off the cameras onto disc. It was something from the car park he previous night, so I figured we'd had a shoplifter in or an accident in the car park. But no, it wasn't anything as pleasant as that. We'd had a situation where a couple, older white gentleman and youngish Asian female, had been in store, and the night security guy just thought they were acting a bit funny, so he follows them around store on CCTV in store to see if anything went on. Nothing really happens during this time, though the guy seems to become more and more aggravated. They go outside having purchased their shopping to pack it into the car boot when a clear argument occurs between them. He suddenly turns around, kicks the empty trolley across the car park, and then smacks her full force in the face out of seemingly nowhere. She recoils in pain. A bit more shouting takes place, but she seems to dutifully take her seat in the passenger seat despite what just took place. During the process of burning this to disc for the police, since our security guy had called it in as an assault, I had to rewatch the moment where he hits her over and over again but watch helplessly as she seems to calmly get into the car of the man who just assaulted her. Long story short, she was a mail order bride who was trafficked here and as well as assault, he got done for people trafficking. So a pretty wholesome ending to an otherwise awful story 25. My friend used to run security for a parking garage and he saw everything from deals to what he could only assume was escorts going on. But the one thing he will never forget was the guy that got beat with knife. He was walking down the parking garage looking drunk, which is why he was looking at him. From his explanation, he stops and starts yelling and flinging his arms around, and just outside of that camera's range was another guy in a hoodie and basketball shorts with the same type of body language. He runs to grab the only other person on staff to see if he should call security or the cops. When he gets back after what he says was four or five minutes, they are now in each other's face, and as the other guy calls security, he sees the hoodie guy beat other guy multiple times before making a run for it. The next five minutes were traumatizing to just hear. Apparently, the guy who got hit got up and was crawling towards the stairs. If anyone has worked in this before, can you answer me one question? As someone watching the footage, are you allowed to leave your post and intervene? My friend said no. But how could one just sit there and not do anything? The guy who got hit with knife died and they were never told about whether the other dude was caught. Story 26. I've tried to forget about the mentally disabled man. I went to college with pleasure himself in a corner. Thankfully, he was behind some fixtures, so all I could see was the gestures but I'd rather rid myself of the entire mental picture. Story 27. Years ago, I worked overnight at a homeless shelter for men. A good portion of the regular guys that stayed there had mental health and or substances problems. There were a lot of fights, but for the most part, everyone was relatively behaved and most were good people at heart. I received a lot of threats, but one ever acted on them. One night when I arrived for my shift, I noticed there was a much larger police presence than usual. I walked into our office and the officer in charge started asking me if I had noticed a guy, Richard behaving unusually at all lately. I had not saw anything out of the ordinary, and I told them such. I looked at the dorm list and noted that he was marked as no longer staying at the shelter. He was a long-term resident, so I thought this was odd. The police left without telling me anything except the fact they needed security footage from two specific cameras from the night before. I did not work the night before, and the guy I normally work with pulled a no-show. We were the only two people besides the manager, who was on a holiday that were trained on how to burn footage to a DVD. I spent the rest of my shift in shock. When I found the footage they were looking for, I felt physically ill. Richard had gone out onto the second floor smoking deck, finished a cigarette, got up on the railing, and dove head first onto the cement below. The first camera on the second floor showed him jump, but the second camera on the first floor was much more gruesome. He landed head first and rolled over in a way that he was staring right into the camera as he lay there. I quickly put the footage on DVD and went to throw up. I was given the next day off, no counseling, no nothing. I'll never forget that one. He was a pretty good dude as far as I knew him. Story 28. 
Whenever we have a bad crash or anything serious happen, we usually search for cameras that captured the incident. Can't tell you how many times I've watched people trams on video. Not really creepy, but just not fun to do. Story 29 was my mom's experience. She works on a cruise ship and has to go through surveillance footage and put the footage in different folders. She said she has nightmares of one simple but creepy thing. One night, a guy walked out of a cabin into the view of the camera and stood for a few minutes, doing nothing, then looked up at the camera, moved as close to it as possible, and smiled into the camera for about five minutes. But she said, watching it felt as if he was looking into the camera for hours. She said, it's just something she can't get out of her head, and it made her feel so uncomfortable. Story 30. At one of our locations, the overnight on-site technician looked at the cameras and saw a customer floating through the hallways with their body upright, stiff as a board. He said it sent a shiver down his spine. Guy rounded the corner and on the next camera, he could see he was riding on a hoverboard through the hallways. A couple of stories from when I was the overnight server monkey at a data center, not really camera related, eyes through the fence. Big buildings like ours need a lot of cooling, so we have massive outdoor plants dedicated to making hot air cold again. Part of my nightly checks was to make sure the hot air was getting colder and the plants were shaking, rocking, flaming, or sparking. This involved going outside and walking along a slotted fence. From time to time, I'd shine my light out there and be greeted with eyes staring right back. Nine-tenths times they were deer. Sometimes they were coyotes or opossums. Santa? This one was probably the ice expanding on the roof, but I would hear it in the summertime as well. I choked it up to some kind of air handling equipment shutting, but every once in a while I would hear loud banging on the roof. Every time I hear it, I'd act like a giddy kid on Christmas and shout, Santa? The cube farms. We had a lot of unused space in the building. Most of the unused space was a bondanded cube farms from when our building was an HQ for a company. I went explore through them one night and there was a massive creep factor. Chairs gathered in some cubes, ceiling tiles missing, flicking lights, cold spots, paranormal wet dream. Most of it was from our lack of maintenance or caring of airflow, but creepy nevertheless. Phantom toilets, never figured this one out, but we had 14 bathrooms in our building for our dozen or so staff. Sometimes on my rounds, I'd walk by a bathroom and hear a toilet or two flush. That one usually got me. Story 31. I used to work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and around 3 or 4 a.m. I would start seeing things from isolation and lack of sleep. There were many times I jumped to the cameras to see if what I was seeing was real or not. I often thought I saw people watching me and jump off the parking garage next door, but it was never real, so I stopped worrying about it. Until one night, I see someone watching me and think nothing of it, until I go to do a patrol, and it turns out that person is real and has been staring at me for 20 minutes. At that point, I just ran back inside and decided I was done my patrols for the night. Story 32. I caught on camera a couple running across the street and onto my client's property. I thought, oh great, some couple about to sex, better go scare them. I walked toward the door, stopped, decided I wanted to get the scaring on camera. I got back to the camera, just missing them walking past the door. I see them peeking out from behind a storage unit and I head outside. As I approach them, they had just left from behind the storage. I yelled something at them. I can't remember what. Then a damn helicopter flies over and lights us up, followed by a swarm of police cars. They just shot someone across the street. And if I'd gone out the door when I was first going to, I would have been shot as well. I'm a fast draw. But drawing down on someone who already has a gun out takes a world-class shooter, which I'm not. Addition, they'd been hiding the gun behind the storage unit. Cops didn't find it and it took me actually going back there and pulling trash for them to continue the search. I found it. That was the first of two firearms I located for Pescortnik's PD in six months. Later, I helped police locate a bullet casing at another job. Finding the casing caused the guy's girlfriend to let police search her apartment and find the gun. He'd been shooting into the air to intimidate someone. I had to remove a BMA from our property last night as he was threatening a manager. When we got outside, he was threatening to shoot me and the manager, saying he wanted to fight, that he'd come back, etc. Then he jumps in his car and accelerates right at me. He was not trying to get out of the parking lot, because right behind me was another car. He got within two feet. I jumped back, drew my firearm. The only thing that snapped me out of that reflex to fire was him hitting his brake and throwing his hands in front of his face. It was at that moment that I woke up. I cannot for the life of me remember drawing my gun. I watched it on camera several times. I was completely justified to shoot. Police would have shot, and the hands up and hitting the brakes are the only thing that kept me from shooting. We were both five pounds of trigger pull weight away from having our lives changed last night. It keeps playing over and over in my head. Story 33. My brother's friend used to watch security cameras at an amusement park. In the park, there was one of those riverboat rides which had hidden cameras to prevent people from pissing in the water, vandalizing ECT. One day, a couple hop on the ride, and the girl starts giving her boyfriend a BJ. So they get done, and the girl leans over the side of the boat to spit. 
Now in the event of any bodily fluids getting into the water, there is a whole process that must be followed involving draining the whole river and decontaminating the ride. It takes a long time, and all the employees hate it. So as soon as my brother's friend sees her about to spit, he grabs the intercom to the ride and shouts, Spitters are quieters! Spitters are quieters! She panics, having no idea anyone was watching, and swallows it. Crisis averted. Story 34. Creepy then funny. I was a property manager at a giant apartment complex for a year. Part of my job was to take complaints that came in during my off hours, review tapes to see what the cams caught, then address the problem. We got calls for people having sex in the spa a lot. On the video, a couple having sex in the spa in just about every position. I recognized them and got the form out to issue the warning when the maintenance supervisor says, hold on. He zooms all the way in and across the property. He could see a woman we all knew sitting on her patio smoking a cigarette watching. We thought, oh man, she's enjoying the show. Then we noticed there's the glow of the SIG and a second glow, a small red light. She was taping the whole thing with a handy cam. She was a pastor at the local church who was always telling us how bad we were for allowing smoking and drinking on the property. She recommended multiple times that we update our rules to align more with the moral teachings of the church. Story 35. Finally, something I can participate in. I used to be a security guard and was stationed at an outdoor engine parts manufacturer's world headquarters office. They had a parking lot that was next to the woods, and a man came out of the tree line during the night and was staring at the camera for an hour straight. We had called the authorities to make a trespassing complaint as none of us wanted to go out and confront him. Around the hour mark, he suddenly sprinted backwards into the woods. The police never found anyone. Crap creeps me out whenever I think about it. Story 36. I have cameras in my house on a local lane. Caught a mouse on the camera once in my daughter's room while she was sleeping. We set up barricades and chased it out of the house all while she was sleeping. Story 37. I worked on a campus watching cameras, was doing my hourly check at around 1 a.m. while talking to my buddy who was the on-duty guard. While flipping through the cameras, I passed by one of our entrances and saw some guy standing at the door just starting in. I spotted it and flipped back to said camera, and my buddy and I just stopped talking and looked at each other because he was gone. I switched to the next camera, which was the exterior camera, and he was not anywhere to be seen. I asked my buddy if he wanted to go check it out. He said, damn no. We checked the footage to see if we saw it right, and sure enough, he was there, but we could never find him on any other camera at that time. The university I worked at was reportedly haunted, but I don't exactly believe in ghost. I still don't believe it was one, but it was still creepy, and I can't explain what exactly happened. I have other stories from do patrols with guards at night, but that's my freakiest night on camera. Story 38. I am a correctional officer on the night shift, so my job involves a lot of watching cameras and performing cell checks. One night, I'm sitting in my office around 0300, and some movement on the CCTV catches my eye. I look up, and there is this big dude walking through my jail, looking like he was on a mission. The only way into the jail is through the booking room right next to my office, and I was 100% sure nobody had walked past me, so my mind starts racing. Did I leave a cell door unlocked? Has a violent inmate escaped? Our cameras are old and the halls are dark at night, so I couldn't see many details on the guy, just that he seemed to be scoping all the other inmates out as he made his way through the cell blocks. As I'm trying to process all of this, I see him suddenly stop and change direction, starting beeline straight to my office. With no time to do anything else, I jump up and run over to the door and get ready for the fight. I waited for what felt like an eternity for this guy to bust my door in with a full-on adrenaline rush, but he never showed up. I glanced back at the cameras and he was gone, disappeared into the ether. After scratching my head for a minute, I went to review the footage. That's when I realized that there was a glitch in our camera's playback that had caused a half-hour delay and the guy in the video was just me doing a cell check and heading back to my own office. Never been more relieved in my life. Story 39, the closest to a horror movie all thing I've ever seen. Some of the patient rooms in our hospital on the psych floor have cameras to help monitor patients so they don't move around too much or hurt themselves since they are often confused, etc. Obviously, the night vision low light camera makes everything look creepy. One night, a phlebotomist came running out of a room totally freaking out. We looked at the camera footage to see what had happened. Patient was an old lady. Video shows a dark, empty room. The phlebotomist walks in and sees that the bed is empty and thinks they must have moved the patient. At that point, as she turns around the door, swings and standing behind the door looking at her. What I can only describe as pure hatred in her eyes is the patient, naked, with her long hair down to her waist. The phlebotomist was scared as anyone would be. She finally managed to say, Mrs. Shelby, I'm from the lab and I'm here to draw some blood. Is that okay? And the patient just said, no, get out. Phlebotomist didn't need to be told twice. We walked over to the room and the old lady was back in bed, sleeping as peaceful as could be. Never remembered a moment of it. Story 40. Not security, but this was out my window. I was just hanging out, 
I was all alone at home and heard seven gunshots. Without thinking how dangerous it was, I looked out the window. What I saw was a man screaming in agony and leaning on a nearby white car. That crap was scary, considering I was only 11. For those of you wondering, the car was taken off the block, and the police arrived within two minutes. But two minutes wasn't enough. Still, don't know if they caught him, but I'm out of that neighborhood now. Story 41. Spent a few years working front desk for various shifts at a few hotels. Moved a lot during this time, so I got a pretty big sampling of people from here and there. But the one thing I will never forget was right here in my home state of Key in broad daylight. A woman who did not have a room with us walked into the pool area from the large sliding glass window, speaking on her cell phone with a bag hanging from that hand and a toddler walking with her on the other hand. She let go of the toddler, then proceeded to get completely nude and continue her conversation standing in the pool area. Not the pool itself, just the pool area. Story 42. I saw a guy at my old job have a seizure on camera. It was at a liquor store. He was a town regularly and never took care of himself. Looked off, but not even drunk. In the middle of counting his change, his head snaps up in the air like he's looking to the heavens above, then just falls right onto the ground. His head missed this wooden wine display by an inch or two. He flailed around and all the change he had was scattered along the ground while one of the guys I work with called 911. Paramedics ended up coming and taking him to the hospital. He was okay, but ended up spending a couple days there. The best part of the story is while this guy is seizing out, he was in front of the cooler of 40 ES. So this one impatient customer, you can see his head sort of looking for a way around to get his booze. He steps over this dude, gingerly opens the cooler door, and grabs his old English 40 before walking up to the register. Story 43. At the company I used to work for, we'd set up some security cameras around an underground storage rental area to monitor a unit that we had things in. The building was essentially a hotel or apartment building that had been renovated to be a small office building but had a parking garage with individually locked garages for storage. After they renovated, they rented out the garages for storage. Anyway, we had one of the units and upgraded its security, security system, different door, cameras. We had two units, one with the upgraded security and a standard garage. One day, we'd gone into the standard garage unit and found out that thieves had broken into our unit by a shared common wall at the back of the unit and used our unit to also get into the next unit. In fact, they'd gone through the common wall of six or seven units and stolen things from each unit. Being that we were the only ones with security cameras, I, being the IT guy at the time, reviewed the whole week to find out what happened. It looks like a crew of three guys and a woman had parked two trucks and broken into the first unit nearest the exit with bolt cutters on the padlocks after dark. Trucks blocked view of them using bolt cutters. But when we found out our unit had been burgled, we'd seen the other unit that was cut when we called the police. Then for the next several hours into the early morning, the security cameras didn't see anything other than movement in and out of the unit to put items into the truck. Then they packed it up, closed the unit, and drove away. Dumb thing was, during this whole escapade, I guess one of them had to use the restroom and used a stairwell next to the elevator to go up to the next level to use the restroom. But there was a camera right in front of the stairwell and elevator that they'd not noticed. If it weren't for the fact that we'd had the camera, they didn't notice them, and that we didn't frequently go into our unit, we would never had seen what was going on. I was the one who showed the video to the police, also gave them a copy on DVD. And when the officer saw the man who had gone up and down the stairwell, identified them immediately with a, oh, that guy. Yeah, we know about that guy. I don't know what happened to them after that, but I was told that the video was the evidence they'd been needing for a while to connect a string of storage unit break-ins around town with the same MO. Story 44. I don't watch security cameras for a living, but one time I worked at Walgreens and had my coworkers tell me to look at the security camera. It was close to Halloween and this dude walked in. He seemed normal, maybe a little odd, and he was wearing mostly black clothes. He bought a mask and some other things and I checked him out. However, on the camera while he was walking around, he walked by the pharmacy. The pharmacy has this camera where it also shows what it's looking at for safety and security. This dude put the mask on and just stared at the camera, not moving for a solid minute before just walking away. Watching that video with him staring at me was too creepy, especially since I was the one that checked him out. Story 45, it could have been nothing, but it's definitely something that's given me an uneasy feeling whenever I think about it. We do temporary cameras for sites while they're in construction, and this particular camera was set up parallel to the perimeter, so you could also see the footpath and up the road a bit. So this one night, a few months ago at about 11 p.m., I see a woman, probably 20 s 30 ietos walking down the footpath. It's obvious she's just walking home from work or something and isn't trying to breach the site, so I go to close it when I notice she keeps looking back at something as she's walking. I give it a few more seconds, and then there's a silhouette of what looks like a man wearing a hoodie crossing the road to the side of the footpath she's walking down. 
She then starts to speed up and jogs past the camera out of view while the guy behind her starts to run the same direction after her until he's out of view as well. After a few minutes of debate, I called the police to hopefully get someone to even just drive by and check it out, but we never heard back about it. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Story 46. Not a CCTV operator, but I was chummy with the security guards I used to work with. It was in a large three-story retail building in a city center, and we had all sorts of folks coming in and out. We had a phantom and phantom crapter who would leave their bodily fluids in random places. They were known as Jack the Crapter and Wanksy, and it turned out to be the same guy. He was clever and knew where all the security cameras were. He'd case the joint. The only reason he got busted was because they were moved. By far, the funniest thing I saw was a guy being chased into the building on the second floor by the police. He ran around the shop for about five minutes while being chased by police and our security guards. It was great watching it on different screens as he moved through the building. Anyway, he got to ground floor and under, estimated the drop onto the escalator, and broke his leg. And the escalator him brought back up to the feet of the security guards who were chasing him. It was brilliant. Story 47. I don't watch cameras for a living, but I feel like this applies. Several years ago, we had a storm come through my city. Somehow during the storm, one of our windows on the first floor was shattered. A couple of the other employees and I decided to look at the security feeds to see exactly how it happened. On the recording, we can see a cleaning lady come into the office where the broken window was. However, it was still intact. So we watched for a bit. She cleaned the windows, dusted the desk, and vacuumed. The window was still intact. Several minutes later, a male comes in and they start marking out a bit. Things get hot and heavy and they doing the damn thing on the desk, chair, floor, and everywhere. You can imagine. They finish their dance of love and leave. The window is still intact. We watched for the shattered glass and found that some piece of debris from the storm hit it and broke it, which is what we figured in the first place. The storm narked on that couple for having sex in the boss's office. Story 48, it'll probably get buried. I didn't work as security, but I did work at an electronics store. Take a wild guess. And it was a department that shared the same supervisor as me. I was the only other person who knew how to work the camera playback. And I got a call during my lunch break that someone had crapped the floor by the bathroom. Got back from my lunch break and rolled back the footage. It was a woman who was still in the store buying a cell phone and she couldn't open the bathroom door because she didn't know the code. So she stood at the corner and lifted her dress and took a crap. She finally was able to get into one of the bathrooms and cleaned up, smelled like crap every day for two weeks because corporate wouldn't take our carpet cleaning request serious. Story 49. I worked security at an art museum in Ohio. It's a very old, architecturally beautiful building. While watching cameras one day, I noticed something weird at one of our entrances. I rewound the video and played it back in slow motion. There was a glitch in the video, and as soon as the video was back to normal, a black shadow, sans person, went across the wall like someone walked through the foyer to the outside. There was zero movement on the exterior camera, as I also rewound it to make sure there were no shadows being cast from walkers or cyclists. The museum is adjacent to an art college, plus it's downtown. However, the street was devoid of any activity. That place is amazing, but I had quite a few, was that? Moments when I worked there. Story 50, I didn't see it, I heard it. I worked for a security company that had microphones dial into our central station when an alarm was tripped, and there we'd listen to the audio of the event and determine if it was legitimate or not and how to proceed. In theory, this cut down on a lot of false positives like HVAC setting off glass break sensors or a cat setting off a motion sensor. Anyway, the way it worked is that you'd be sitting there, then a little red light would come on under a speaker, and you'd see the account code, example 2312, under the speaker and listen for a few seconds. Most of the time it was wind or neighbors or whatever, or somebody coding in too slowly. But once I was sitting there working my graveyard shift, at 2 3 am I hear a door open at account 1932. Okay, I check the history. Normally no activity at 2 3 am. Motion sensor goes off in the lobby. Nobody's coding in. Motion sensor in the hallway, still nobody coding in. The owners have dispatch instructions. Call us first before we call the police. So I call the two numbers for the owners. No answer on either. Listening for a few more minutes, I start hearing guttural noises, like a feral animal. Couldn't place it, but decided to roll the police. Called police dispatch, told them where to go. There are multiple motion detectors and a door violation plus audio of guttural kind of grunting or growling noises. Police advise they'll be there in 10, 15 minutes. They must have been closer than they thought because it was more like five, seven minutes. Grunting, growling is louder and more pronounced. At this point, I'm pretty sure a stray dog or something is in there. Then I hear the noise grunt, oh crap, and realize I've been listening to a person this whole time. Cops are in the parking lot. Turns out it's a guy noisily eating stuff out of the garbage, like grotesque amounts of noise. It was really disconcerting. Story 51, I used to work in it. At some point, I need to clean up a network drive and found a saved security camera video folder labeled Buttman. 
I had to go ask the security guy if I wanted to know who Buttman was, and if I could delete him, turned out it was a man whom, would in the middle of the night, raid our cigarette disposal bucket near the side door, empty it into a bag, and run off one of the videos. It appears he was just wolfing down cigarette butts from his baggie. Story 52. Left my dog to have do some chore in backyard and came back to find my eight-month-old dog dead. Was too shocked with what happened, and as I loved her so much. After two days, when I felt stable, I looked at my home security camera and saw footage of her being run over by car and how she came to my frequently used chair trying to find me and collapsed there in the yard. Damn those ninjas cutting onions again. Story 53. I worked for a Christian-based university for security for a brief period. It was easy. 90% of the job was unlocking doors for people. I was working a Friday night shift and noticed a couple in the sitting area off the lobby, which is a common place to see couples lounging around. I only started watching them because I could tell they were in an argument. I could tell it was getting loud, so I thought I should walk over there and tell them to calm down. It was a small university, so I was the only guy on duty. When I got there, the security office was maybe a five-minute walk. He had left, and she was hunkered in the corner near the steps. I calmed her down and asked her what happened, and she said nothing, just an argument. I did notice her face was red and thought it was from crying, and I walked her to the security car and drove her to her dorm and dropped her off. When I got back to the office, I rolled the video back and copied it and saw that he had punched her in the face and kicked her on the ground several times. I called my boss, which is what we were supposed to do. He took the copy of the video, and you know what? The university actually did something about it. They kicked him out, which I was surprised about. But he got back in after his parents lawyered up, and the girlfriend confessed that she agitated him to the point of violence. He got back in. Life went on. They probably got married. Story 54. Watched footage from the pre ius night of a nurse walking onto an elevator, casually talking on the phone. As she walked off, a little log of poop slid out of her pant leg. The following 60 minutes of video were hilarious reactions and lack of reactions to the poop log. Lack of reaction came from random folks who didn't look up from their phone. One unfortunate soul stepped right in it. I wonder when they finally noticed that they stepped into human poo-poo. Story 55. Worked security in one of the larger financial buildings in downtown Toronto a number of years back as a control room operator. The complex has hundreds of cameras monitoring the inside and outside of this building, and I spent most of my 12-hour day and night shifts just people watching. It is honestly pretty amazing what people do when they don't think they are being watched. A lot of parking lot sex on weekends, for example. During a night shift, I've witnessed someone walk through the PATH system, underground tunnel system connecting many Toronto buildings some following others while discreetly touching themselves, etc. One of the weirder creepy ones, though, was a man walking through the building in the dead of night before lockups, slowly carrying a single balloon. That one got to me. Story 56. This was around 1997. In college, was a traffic reporter in a largish city. I worked in a studio with live video feeds from our cameras all over the city region. One Monday afternoon, another reporter came running in and yelled, turn camera hash seven to the underpass by big football stadium. A man and woman were going at it big time over the hood of his truck. After about seven minutes, they took a break, and he got sandwiches and beer out of a cooler in the back. After snacking, they went at it again. After about a half hour, one of us suddenly remembered that one of our TV affiliates had started linking the video feeds on their website. Story 57? Oh, relevant. I actually do watch security cameras for a living for a high-rise in big old city. Here's the creepiest thing. One floor in my building, Every Halloween, like a dozen of the folks in the company that work there do a big group Halloween costume. One year it was presidents, one year it was different characters from the same TV show. So the Halloween, I'm watching the cameras, not really thinking about Halloween. I glance at the elevator cameras to see an elevator door open, and a dozen women all dressed like the grudge ghost enter the elevator at once. It spooked me for a second. TBH, the creepiest real thing you ever see are unsettling looking people carrying around lengths of chains or pipes or other unidentified weapons and swinging them around while screaming maniacally. Happens every so often overnight. Mental health care for the homeless is pretty much non-existent. Very frequently, we see drunk people leaving nearby bars at night and stopping to piss on the side of the building. Infrequently, couples will stop for a BJ or a quickie. Crazy people will get naked once or twice a year. The absolute worst thing I've ever had to see was a guy walking around a small, somewhat inaccessible outdoor area suddenly turn around, drop his pants, and begin crafting with such an insane quickness that the image of this man's poop leaving his butthole will forever be ingrained in my memory. I hate it so, so much. Story 58. This happened in my work, but it was before I started, so I've only been told the story. I work for a company that provides security guards to different business and also monitors their security cameras. One night, one of our guys was watching the security cameras when he noticed somebody in black with their hood up sneaking onto site. 
He tried to contact the guard to inform him of a single intruder on site, but he couldn't get a hold of him. Following protocol, my colleague contacted the response driver and sent him to site to investigate. The driver arrived on site and went straight to the guardhouse to look for the security guard. He found him. The guard was found holding the intruder over a bench and was ducking him, and the intruder seemed to be really enjoying himself. Needless to say, I think the guard preferred being intruder that night. Story 59. Sitting in an ops center in the Mideast, we watched a pair of individuals dig a big asshole into the shoulder of the road at 3 a.m. We could only watch because we had to give benefit of the doubt they could be doing irrigation at 3 a.m. Hiding from passing cars, we all knew exactly what it was. Watched them dig hole, move stuff inside of hole, fill hole, cover hole. Watched it all through a thermal eye in the sky, but couldn't do a damn thing because row was at its craptiest point. We let the local mile know where to find it, and they said they'd check it out the next day. As the sun came up, I watched as people went about their lives walking over this couple hundred pound bomb. Mothers walking kids to school, to mosque, whatever. Farmers hauling their produce. Local miles found it all right. It turned their truck into a crater. Thankfully, I wasn't on shift to see that bit. Story 60. A pool at what seemed like a nice apartment complex on a hot summer day. Families having a nice time playing and relaxing. A couple sitting on a pair of lounges across the pool from the camera. The woman was talking on the phone. They were a couple, and the man looked impatient, but not very significant. And then the man just stood up and shot her several times. She tried to get up, and he shot her, and she fell forward onto the ground. I've seen a lot of terrible videos, but this was the worst. Everyone froze. There was nothing they could do. One lady next to the front of the camera was holding her breath underwater while the event happened. The shooter was wearing a shirt that said, Sun's out, guns out. I wonder to this day if he did that on purpose. Just as casually as he shot her, he walked across the pool towards the security camera and left. They found him hiding in a different state and arrested him a while later. The girl died in the hospital. I've seen a lot of very violent occurrences and aftermaths, but this is the one I always think back to. Story 61. Not a security officer, but I work in a teaching hospital, and with permission, we record surgeries so the interns slash residents slash attending can review them for Monday mornings. Basically, meetings where you have to explain what went very bad or very good in the surgical theater. Well, I'm reviewing this one tape where something happened with the anesthesia during the procedure, and had an attending not caught the error, the patient would have died. We had to full-on stop the surgery, give this poor dude medicine, and crudely sew him up and go back in the next day. Turns out one of the interns was skimming Substansec, and as a result was high, and dosed the fentanyl in milligrams instead of micrograms. Damn that intern. And yes, he lost his license. Story 62. Saw our snow removal guy crap beside the receiving door, not wipe, and get back in his truck. Only found because I almost stepped in it, and wanted to see what animal left such a giant poop by the door. Story 63. My home video surveillance once captured a dude luring a girl into a corner of my yard where he abused her. The video didn't show the actual act. It just showed the luring and the aftermath. Story 64. Delete. I had to witness a boy get ran over by an 18-wheeler. Was doing it support A for a company that managed small to medium business network infrastructure for third-party companies. We get called to pull footage from one of their locations. I was told the time frames and to grab all of the cameras. I had to watch the download to make sure we pulled good footage. Here's how it went. Little boy is sitting on dad's lap and they're playing. Dad is tickling and chasing little boy around the lobby being silly. Mom finishes and gets up to leave. Hold door open. Little boy continues game run straight out the door and into the street. Boy never even knew what hit him. Was by far the worst thing I've ever seen. The screams afterwards still wake me up. Before you get crazy, I knew what I was getting into. Just not the extent and how well the camera's audio captured everything. I have multiple kids and one around the same age at the time I pulled the footage. I went home early and just spent time with my family for the rest of the day. Story 65. Tried to forget this one. Was in college, working for a security company at a manufacturing plant. We had a gate that faced near an airport, back road. There were no sidewalks on this road, and it was often busy as a cut through to another high traffic road. Saw an intoxicated guy try to walk on the curb like a balancing beam, sleep and fall in front of an oncoming truck that was speeding through the area to get around the backed up traffic. This was in broad daylight, around four in the afternoon. Before he fell, we pulled him on the camera and made the comment, he's going to get himself killed. Story 66. Worked in a bar where I was pretty good friends with the manager. They had full access to security footage to write reports, etc. One night when I was off work, they held an engagement party in the venue. Very well-dressed upper middle class people. Getting too drunk and doing silly things. Standard. Except one woman who had tried to gain the attention of a guy all night to no avail. Followed him into the gaming room, pokey machines got his attention, swung her chair around, hiked her skirt up, and started flicking her bean as vigorously as she could whilst maintaining eye contact. 
My next shift at work, the manager made me a cup of tea and we saw some of the footage together and just drank our tea in mutual disbelief. I've seen some gross pervs, but it was just so shocking to see someone you wouldn't expect anything of doing that. Story 67. I used to work overnight in a 24-hour coffee shop. Most of the time, nothing interesting happened besides the time a car crashed into a light pole outside. However, I did see something I can explain on one of the security cameras. One side of the building faces towards the highway, a town. The other two are up against other buildings. In the back, however, is probably a good 50 miles of untouched forest. One night I heard noises coming from the back door. I went to the back room to look at the security cameras and discovered a small herd of deer were hanging around back there. A customer came in a few minutes later and I went to serve him. When I came back later, the deer were still there. Then, to my surprise, out from the woods came a mountain lion. It leaped on one of the deer and, well, you get the rest. Since the back room was connected to the back door, I got to hear everything as well as see it. The following morning, I had to go out and clean up. I found a new job a few months later, but I can still see that night in my head. Story 68. Worked in assets protection at Target through college. The cameras have a search feature where you can search a selected area for motion so you don't need to watch the thing for hours to find out when something was taken off the shelf. I would always get creeped out by what it picked up in the middle of the night, sometimes nothing visible. Crap falling off shelves randomly. I hated closing shifts. Story 69. Wasn't a security officer, but worked in it and managed the cameras. I was asked by the superintendent to go across town and pull up security footage for the police. The video was of a co-worker coming in that morning at 2 a.m. with a gun, set it on the desk, came back a few minutes later and died. Story 70. At my workplace, public library, all employees have access to the security cameras. There's so few of us that we have to operate that way. Last summer, there was an incident where a frantic patron came up to me at the front desk and told me that a man was having sex it in the nonfiction section. Naturally, I told my director, who chased the guy out. We pulled up the security camera so we could grab his picture and send it to the rest of the staff as a warning that he was a degenerate. The footage showed him sitting in a chair in the nonfiction section, staring straight ahead at a bookshelf and just pleasure himself. If you only saw him from the shoulders up, you wouldn't suspect a thing. I thought it was super creepy how robotic he looked while pleasure himself in public. Story 71, not me, but at a hospital where I used to work on graveyard shift. Security guys kept seeing this homeless guy enter the parking garage elevator around the same time each evening. They realized that they never see him come out again. He doesn't reappear on any of the parking garage floors, nor into the sky bridge leading from the parking garage into the hospital, or anywhere else. So, they talk to day shift, and all the guys review some of the past week's morning footage together. They see the guy leaving around the same time every day. This had only been going on for a few days when they noticed it. Anyhow, Maintenance was called in to inspect the elevator, and it turned out that the guy had been sleeping up on top of the elevator itself. Apparently, he had a stash of food up there and everything. It was interesting and sad at the same time. Story 72. My friend works at a casino. He sent a text saying, I see you on video. I opened my phone at the table to see what the message was. Get in trouble for using the phone at the table. Story 73. I worked as a security guard for a pharmaceutical company. I monitored a bunch of equipment, door alarms, as well as cameras. There was a customer service center in one of the buildings on campus, and the customer service reps tended to be attractive. One woman in particular was spectacularly so. She was constantly fending off creeps, like people would come to the front desk of a secured building to try to find out where she worked. I often followed people's movements out to the parking deck after dark upon request, because lots of people were creeped out by the remoteness of it. There were several nights when I would see guys suspiciously waiting around when her shift ended. I would escort her out, and the security officer at the desk would tell me the guys would leave as soon as they saw me walk out the front door with her. It made me really appreciate how creepy and scary guys can be around women, and made me wonder just what they were intending to do if she was alone. Story 74. I used to work a security job. I worked a few shifts at the hospital where I knew a few of the guards. My friend then asks if I want to see some events from the week. The first video we watched was a guy walking in with a with knife wounds. Blood was gushing everywhere as he stumbled into emergency. He was holding his neck, but I have no idea how he made it in. He followed that by showing me a woman in psych just furiously pleasure herself while a guard had his back to her door. She then crap on the floor, picked it up, and threw it against the glass of the door. We watched a few more, but those two stuck with me. I then went on my rounds and found a heroin stash with a bunch of clean needles and substances by the hospital parking lot. It was an eventful day. Story 75? In it, we come in charge of CSTV because it plugs in. Come in Monday morning with cops swarming the place? have to look up footage of what happened over the weekend. I watched the footage, and it's pretty disturbing. Some dude got substances up and hopped over our barbed wire fence. I watch him struggle with the barbed wire, obviously cutting himself on it, but he powers through. He yanks on door S along the building, but luckily they're all locked. 
he starts pounding on the walls. Cops show up guns drawn. He pulls out an object from his pocket that looks like a knife. We later learn it was a house key. This guy starts shouting, shoot me, shoot me. Watch this for a few minutes before the cop tases him, thankfully, and he is arrested. Apparently he had a breakup and decided to do a lot of substances. Story 76. I work security at a hospital with a trauma center. You quickly become desensitized to suffering and death. However, the one thing which is going to stick with me the most is a patient who was brought in by M's under the suspicion of an overdose. I fought with him for approximately three hours while he broke hospital restraints. Over the course of those three hours, he was dosed up with enough sedatives to knock out any normal person at least 10 times over. I saw the patient at the hospital two days later, and he was completely lucid and an entirely different person. He had done zero form of illicit substances. I knew that the head pills ducked with you hard, but seeing someone go into full psychosis and become indistinguishable from a junkie really hit home with how bad those meds can be. Story 77. Two incidents. First was having put pull video of a student who collapsed at school and watching the nurse, security officer, and an assistant principal give CPR to the students. I don't remember how long they worked on him till paramedics arrived, but thanks to them, he survived. Second was worse. A police officer was killed in the parking lot of an annex courthouse right across from my job. Apparently, they only installed cameras on the interior of the building and none outside. Our building is the only one in the immediate area of incident that had an exterior camera. Had three different departments, all loaded for bear, coming to me for video. We finally got them all to agree on one liaison so I wasn't having hovering officers with rifles over my shoulder throughout the day. Long story short, the suspect died after a day or two after died the officer. Story 78. When I worked in retail, I asked the LP the same question. And he told me that like a year before, they caught some guy on substances, pleasure himself with a wrench in the bushes. And then like a month after I asked, they caught him doing the same thing, but with a tire iron this time. I'm not exactly sure how you do that with either of those, and I was not going to ask. Story 79. One time this guy went up to my porch and he got the Amazon box, which was on my porch. He ripped it open and it was my new phone, an iPhone 8S, and he decided to take it. And as he was walking away, a police car was patrolling, pulled over and started to get out of the car. At that point, he freaked out and threw the literal box at his face, and the police officer fell and hit the curb. As he started to run, he got tased. Oof. The police handcuffed him and he didn't return my iPhone 8S, but I went down to the police step and told them what happened and showed them video proof. I got my phone back. Yay. Story 80. Not creepy, but I've seen lots of women changing in our hallways. Busy mall. When the bathrooms are closed, I'm talking full nudity. We also had a recording of a guy who jumped off a higher floor and died. Had to play that back for the police a few times. Story 81. Not as impressive or icky as some of the ones I'm seeing here. Working at security at my last job, if there were any incidents, I was asked to review our camera footage to see what happened. Came in one day and the maintenance guy asked if I could figure out why the smoker's ash urn thingy was taken apart one morning. So I looked into it, found footage of a homeless guy walking up, taking it apart to get the bucket of cigarette butts out. Then he sat and smoked 15 or so butts before walking off through the parking lot, taking the bucket with him. Story 82. Just recently watched some guy die in the ed. It was weird because I had talked to him when came in at the beginning of my shift. It was weird having to transport his body to the morgue. I hit a bump and said, sorry, mister, then stopped mid-sentence. I hadn't disconnected fully that he was gone. Story 83. The video was out, but the audio was working as a woman attempted to commit hurt herself. The screams of the people seated around her still haunt me.